Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from ExitAutomation.com and this is a new video to demonstrate how Visual Studio 2017 looks like in Mac operating system. So just a week before Microsoft Visual Studio released Visual Studio for Mac and I'm very excited to see C Sharp running in a Mac operating system. And we all know that the nano project of Microsoft .NET Frameworks fork branch started to work with and they started to work before in a year or two, I guess. And this Mono framework was really, really cool because it runs on Linux, Mac, and Windows operating system. So this is really a breakthrough for Microsoft because now we cannot say that .NET can run only in Microsoft Windows operating system. Rather, it also run in Mac and Linux operating system. So that paved the way for developing Visual Studio IDE for Mac operating system as well. So for that, I'm gonna just install the Visual Studio in our Mac operating system. I have already installed that, uh, but I can quickly show you how the Visual Studio looks like. So you can just go to the visualstudio.com and here you can see that they have released a Visual Studio IDE for Mac operating system as well. So you can see that not this one, the Visual Studio code, this is available already for a pretty long time. It also runs in Linux and Mac operating system along with Windows operating system. But this one is new, Visual Studio for Mac. So we'll quickly see how it looks like, but again, don't get carried away that you can develop a WPF application or you can do some of the great things like installers, which you can do in Visual Studio for Windows operating system. But this Visual Studio for Mac is the IDE to mainly develop the mobile applications and cloud applications. That's what the caption is. You can see Visual Studio for Mac is a mobile first, cloud first IDE made for the Mac. So let's quickly dive into this. So for that first we need to download the Visual Studio for Mac. I can just go over here and then I can download the Visual Studio for Mac preview. So this will basically download a .dmg file in your Mac operating system and then you can start installing from there. So I have already downloaded that and you can see in my downloads, I have this Visual Studio for Mac preview installer.dmg and I have also installed this in my machine. It's very, very simple. All it's going to do is just next, next, next and you can do the installation. But let's quickly open the Visual Studio and write our first code and see how it works. So for doing that, I'm just going to do a search for Visual Studio. There we go. All right. So the Visual Studio is opened. And right now, I'm just going to write a very, very simple code. So the first time you can see that this IDE is kind of different from what we see in our actual Windows operating system. It is kind of very cool, kind of neat, and you can see there is a sign-in out here, and you can see the getting starter. So you can see the getting started actually available in this pane, but right now it has been moved in here for the Visual Studio for Mac, right? So let's create a new project. I just created a first project just to see how it works, but yep, it's, uh, it's not working because you need to do a lot of other additional stuff to make this code actually running. And you can see that there is a multi-platform option here for the apps and you can see Xamarin form and within the Xamarin form you have the form apps, connected apps, native iOS apps and games. So basically you can develop the mobile application using Xamarin but you can see that there is nothing called Windows application or something like a WPF application out here. It's completely mobile applications that you can develop. And you can develop the application for iOS, tvOS, and Android. And you can see that you can of course develop a Android application as well using Xamarin again. And there is a .NET Core. This guy is what we are very much interested in right now. We are actually going to write our console application on Mac. This is really, really exciting, right? We were writing this console application so far in Windows operating system, but this is the first time we're gonna write a console application in Mac operating system. And you can also develop a ASP.NET Core web application on Mac. We can actually see this in our next video, but for now we'll just look into this application, the console application for .NET, right? So 
I'm just going to select this and I'm going to hit next and you can give the name of the project. So you can give any name. So I'm actually going to give what is called as first demo and then you can also select the use git for version control if you want but I'm just going to leave it as it is for now and I'm just going to create and you can see that it's also showing you the folder structure actually it's sitting in users Karthik projects and there's a first demo and there's a SLN file and there is a csproj file as well which is also cool I'm just going to create it right now so it is creating the project it's restoring the package for the project you can see that it is actually restoring the NuGet packages basically for our project so that you can see these references will be added sorry the dependencies will be added in here the NuGet dependencies like NuGet Microsoft.NET SDK and Microsoft.NET Core.app so these two will basically be added for the first time for you and once you see by expanding this .NET Core app, you can see all the libraries, the Microsoft C Sharp library, Microsoft .NET Core, .NET host policy, and .NET standard libraries, and all the important library which we require for writing the code in C Sharp will be available over here. So basically, Microsoft has just published all the libraries, the DLL files, into NuGet, right? So if you're trying to run this particular project, I basically got a message saying I don't have the .NET Core. There we go. It says the .NET Core is required to run this application. We need to download this .NET Core basically. So what is going to happen is it's going to open the browser for us and it's going to show me that we need to first install this .NET Core. But before installing, there is a prerequisite again. This is nothing but the homebrew. It's more like the chocolatey for Windows. Again, chocolatey is something we have already discussed in our Excel Automation channel. So if you see how it looks like, it's basically a PowerShell which works like a NuGet for Windows. And similarly, there is a Homebrew which is like chocolatey for Mac. So I'm just gonna open the terminal and there is an installation guide. So install Homebrew. So I'm just gonna follow the same instruction. I have not did this ever in my lifetime so far. And this is the first time I'm gonna do. So just bear with me and see if it really works. So what does it says? Press return to continue. There we go. And it's asking me for my password. So right now it is downloading the homebrew and also it is installing. I don't know how long it will it take. So I'll be back once the downloading and installation is done. All right, seems like the homebrew is installed right now. And let's see what else we need to do. Homebrew owned install the file outside its prefix and you can place the homebrew installation where you like. And there is something like homebrew formulas or simple Ruby script. And I don't know what is this. So basically I'm not going to be very much interested in these things. Rather I have installed homebrew, which is the only thing I can do. And then after installing the homebrew, do the following. So it says brew update. Mm -hmm. I think I don't have any update because I just installed it. So even if I do update, it doesn't make any sense. All right, it says already up to date. And then it says brew install open SSL. So we can run that. So it is installing the open SSL. And then we need to do something called as make directory for this guy, the user local lib. So basically, I guess it's going to put all the libraries in required for our .NET Core. So I'm just going to paste it over here and then I'm going to install it. Okay, uh, so that's being created. And then we need to add a link, I guess. There we go. And then the finally, the last line. So I'm just going to do that as well. Oops. What happened? Okay, control Windows V. There we go. Super cool. Uh, so everything is done. The pretty good site is over right now. And then install the .NET Core SDK. So installing the .NET Core SDK, the best way to install .NET Core on Mac is to download the official installer. So let's do that. All right, so it seems like it's around 50 MB. So once the downloading is done, I'll be back. All right, seems like the downloading is over. So I'm just going to open that and it's going to start the installation for me. 
All right, so it says Microsoft.NET Core CLI. I'm gonna hit continue, continue again. It says that I need to agree, okay, I agree that. And then I'm gonna install. So it's gonna prompt me for the password. All right, access granted. Installation over, super fast. And it says that you want to move it to the trash, of course. Super, this is really good. Okay. And you can see that my supers are because I have never used Mac in my lifetime so far. And that's the reason I'm just getting excited for everything. All right, it says that downloading the .NET Core debugger. Hmm. Okay, so I'm just running it right now. And basically, let's see what's gonna happen. We have already downloaded the .NET Core library but still I think it's gonna add some references. Mm -hmm. Let's give them access again. All right, so let's try to run this again and see what's gonna happen. Basically, I should see the console output coming in. Mm, okay. Is kind of running and you can actually see the output I guess somewhere over here you can see there is something called as application output and we have our output here hello world super right you can see that it is basically doing a lot of things it's loading all the bins folder and the DLL file and then it is also loading the runtime DLL MS cop DLL console DLLs and all those DLLs required and then it is executing the application and then we are getting our hello world out here which is kind of cool and very very interesting because this is the first time i'm seeing microsoft visual studios code is actually running in a mac operating system which is kind of very great and then let's try to see how the intelligence looks like so basically we used to do how uh once a console application is written the black window just appears and splashes out and disappears but we are seeing a different output here because there is nothing called as console in mac operating system rather it should have opened in the terminal but it did not it is showing the output in the application window so how is this console dot read line looks like console dot wow just cool because i can see this very very neat and it also shows the intelligence help and there's a tooltip help here with the summary so console dot how about read there we go super and then I'm gonna just save it and run this let's see what's gonna happen there we go hello world and it's actually expecting us to type something that's why it's just waiting so now if I just pass in some key out there in here hit enter any key okay I don't know how to pass the key Maybe I don't know. I am just thinking just to hit somewhere and does the job, but basically it's, I don't know where to give the key entry. So let me just stop the test. Maybe uh, let's try to run something meaningful. Uh, let's try to write, create a method. Public void simple addition program and let's do integer a integer b and why don't we just return this guy return an integer and then let's try to return a plus b there we go and i'm just going to print that value console dot right line of add of 21 comma 20 there we go so save it I'm gonna run this so now the all right you can see that it is also showing us a very cool error here it says expector bracket over there so uh, I'm just gonna put that and this is very very neat as well so let me run this oh yeah you know what I also forgot the static so wow once I came to Mac, I completely forgot the programming. I should have given a static keyword here because we're running in a main method, which is of static type here. So it should be static as well. Or you need to create a reference of the particular object. So let's make that 
method name of static and try to run this. Hopefully this time it should run. And I could see that the debugging is working fine as well, right? There we go, so 41, that's the output. Cool. So everything is working so cool. The Visual Studio IDE is very, very neat compared to Visual Studio Code for Mac. And I, I guess this is really a great move for Microsoft to or enable people to execute a C sharp program on Mac operating system. Once again, thank you very much for watching this videos guys and have a great day.